Hey what's up guys, the one and only the YouTuber here back with another video and today we're going to be taking a look at Clam Man 2 Open Mic. Now I've never heard of this series before but it just recently came out on uh, Steam as, for free so I was like hey might as well you know check it out because it's free. And I'm also going to be covering a little bit of more like first looks on other type games but this one just kind of caught my interest because like an RPG. Um, it's like, yeah, like I said, it was like an RPG and there's like a D20 involved and like actions and stuff. So, you know, it was kind of interesting. So I guess let's take a look at it. Also, sorry if you guys hear like click clackety of the keyboard. Um, still trying to work everything out on how, uh, my setup is working and everything. So, you know, if you do hear that, I apologize. I am trying to work it out as much as possible. Form. Uh, Snacky Bay Prime. Mayonnaise Automated Employee Evaluation Form JS34B. Click anywhere. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's do that. That's what it says. Welcome to your evaluation employee number blank. Don't worry, this will be very brief. We're just taking a quick quarterly moment to reestablish your relationship with Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise. That's an interesting name, not gonna lie. Okay, uh, yeah. I wasn't even aware that I had a relationship with Snacky Bay. What? Of course you do. You've been at this company for years. You two have long, rich history together. Oh, right, yeah, I remember. It's crazy, the whole conspiracy. That was four years ago. Time flies when you work in an office, huh? Sure, let's get on with the form, shall we? Let's, I assure you, this won't take long. For this evaluation, we'll be asking you to initially state some information about yourself and then provide us with a truthful and honest estimation of your skills and abilities. Sounds easy enough. Bring it on. What is your name? Uh, Clayman. What is your position at Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise? Uh, Senior Sales Representative. Great job filling in those two fields. Your enthusiasm and ability to follow instructions are highly valued skills here at Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise. Speaking of skills, let's move on to the next part of the evaluation. Using numeric values, give us your own impression of your skills, and remember, please don't overestimate yourself. Uh, all right, let's do it. What would you say is your strongest skill? Uh, Self-awareness. Perfect. The company appreciates employees always been always keen and willing to apologize, especially when it's when it isn't their fault. What about your second highest skill? Um, uh, detection? Fantastic, your observational skills are a valuable asset to this company. Almost as valuable as your ability to spend 10 hours a day doing menial, repetitive tasks. How fun. What skill of yours could use some improvement? Probably improv. Not to worry, here at Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise, we don't mind if you think less. In fact, we encourage it. Finally, what's your greatest weakness? Aqua Dynamics. While we regret having learnt this, we would like to congratulate you for your ability to handle a pencil in this form. Please try to hand it in and before you inevitably tear it apart or set it on fire. And that's all your skills estimated. To confirm this, we're going to need your signature at the bottom of the page. Alright, um, yeah. Yep, sounds about right. Well done. You successfully managed to answer a number of questions about yourself. This information will be processed and checked for your discrepancies by an AI far superior to yourself. I'm going to flip that form. There seems to be a number of simple instructions on the other side of the form. I want to read them because it's a tutorial. Form. Interacting with people can be tricky, but as long as you understand the two different types of skill checks, you'll manage just fine. The two types are the roll check and the static check. What's a roll check? A roll check is indicated by the name of one of your skills or modifier to the stat and the difficulty of the check. Doing a roll check means rolling a d20 or a 20 sided die and your modifier and hoping it's higher than the target number. Even if you have amazingly high and frustrating low stats, you can always fail or succeed a roll check immediately by rolling 1 or 20 respectively. These counts as criticals and bypass all modifiers. In short, rolling a 20 always succeeds and rolling a 1 always fails. Try to understand. Oh, let's go. Absolute child's play. You're you're so smart. You understand this. You understood this yesterday. Let's freaking go. Great job. Is there anything else you want to know? What a static check is. 
very are simple. A sign of check is invisible to you unless you fulfill its conditions. It can be spotted by the appearance, the relevant stat, followed by an indicator of how high or low that stat needed to be for that option to show up. For an example, someone with high de detection will notice things someone with low detection won't and are given that and are given the option to act on that. That's it, that's how it works. You think you can thank your detection for that. Of course that static checks apply to all stats and require either very low stats or very high ones, and that's about it. Any other questions? Nope. Thank you for your time. Thanks for all your hard work here at the Snack Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise. Now that is an interesting name. Oh, is that my boss? Pete. Three knocks on your cubicle and the creeping smell of coffee. You already know who's coming to see you. Hey man. Oh, he's got is voice. that the uh the evaluation form? Almost done? Not much. Not much. <clears throat> Alright, hot take. The pickle is the most important part of the burger. Change my mind. Hmm. Damn straight, he takes another sip of his coffee. I've been asking other people in the office, you want to believe the the insanities I've been hearing? Yeah, what have they been saying? He leans in. Jackson says the, in the onions. Can you? He shakes his head and then continues. Can you believe that? Onions? Nah, crazy talk. Absolute crazy talk. When he said tomato, but she's old. And I don't know what hamburgers were like back in her day. I couldn't bear telling her she was wrong. Huh? Tomatoes do give burgers some freshness. Yeah, and that's important, but you know what component does that better? I have some idea, yes. He takes another sip of the coffee. Pickle power, dude. Pickle power. Anyway, that's not why I came to see you. Uh, let's see. <laughs> you say that like, it's not important, dude. I'm the CEO. I have to ask the tough questions. I'm glad you're so confident about the answer. There's a reason I'm CEO. Pickle wisdom. I mean, not really, but I'd like to think th that part played a part. <laughs> Goodness. Anyway, that's not why I came to see you. Uh. Alright, what is it? Come on, I'll show you. Alright, let's lead the way. So I don't know if this... Ooh. Okay. Uh, echoes of light metallic... Taps and clanks climb their way up the elevator shaft. The low, peaceful rumbling of the bowels of Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise office building. The relaxed breathing of a giant concrete behemoth. It sounds normal, like there's no cause for alarm. Peaceful. All is in, all is well in Snacky Bay, and for the first time in a while, Pete seems excited about something. That's not even the best part, dude. <laughs> Amazing, that elevator shaft, I can't believe it. This is what I wanted to show you. Remember our old boss? This is his old private elevator. After he, uh, disappeared, there was no way of getting inside. He just sat there. Until today. Ooh. Takes a step forward, carefully scanning the inside of the shaft. It must have short-circuited or something, because it just shot up through the roof this morning. Like a bullet, man. It just burst through some private elevator, huh? He nods. It's just a wreck. We managed to open it up, but there was nothing inside. I noticed something, though. He looks excited. Whatever this is, he could barely wait to tell you about it. Uh, what? You know how the regular buttons elevators had 10 buttons? This one had more. The air is taken out of him. He was hoping to surprise you. Tangible disappointment. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this one had 11. How awesome is that? There's a secret floor. Oh right, sometimes you'll come across a task or a mission that you can choose to pursue. If you do, the quest will be added to your quest journal. You can then refer to your journal whenever to check that you have done so far and what you need to do next. What's the point of these quests you call? Alright, how do I check the journal? Click the check mark in the lower left next to your big dumb face. Ouch, that hurts.
That's awesome. I know. Finally, something interesting. Honestly, dude, this CAO deal kind of sucks. It's just work on work on work, and I'm just about ready to lose it. I needed this, man. My sanity needed this. Happy for you, man. It's hard to tell you. It's hard to tell if he's more excited for the secret floor or your reaction. Either way, Peter's over the moon. You haven't seen him smile like this in a long time. So, how do we get down there? Hesitation. He didn't think of that until now. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of a high. It's kind of high to jump. Is it too high to jump? Gaping void of death and elevators. Who knows? Why not test it out? It's too high. I see. Um. Any ideas? There's some people coming to fix the elevator. We could wait for them and then ask for them help. Oh, that's awful. All right, here's an idea. If we swan dive into the shaft, our, our heads will absorb the blow and our bodies will be fine to go exploring. I don't know. I mean, are we really that thick-headed? Uh-oh. We definitely are. <laughs> Undoubtedly. Oh, no. Undeniably so. Oh, okay. That said, I'm pretty sure it goes against company policy to dive headfirst in anything without proper paperwork. I don't think we have that time. I don't think we have time for that. Fine. No swan dive. Okay, cool. Honestly, I'm kind of relieved. Uh, maybe we could climb down somehow. You think we could? Try to maintain balance as you shake your head. You could find another way, man. It's fine. Alright, so how do we do this? He shrugs. Either we climb down or we wait until the service guys show up later today. They'll probably have a ladder and a rope. When are they coming? Well, they said sometime between a half an hour ago and 7.30. So in the next three minutes are in seven hours. Got it. Uh... Let's just wait. Let's just wait for the service crew. Climbing down seems pretty dangerous. Sure. Let's find something to do until they arrive. Should we be working anyway? Oh, dude, come on. I don't want to work now. Points at this shaft. Besides, could you focus on anything other than this? This is like the most interesting to happen in years. I needed this, and I don't need work right now. Um, all right, what do you want to do until the service crew shows up? I'm not sure. Come on. We'll think of something. I guess we didn't think of anything. <laughs> oh, never mind. Nice chill session. That's me. That's the CEO. Pete. I was at the corner store yesterday. Glad you made it. Right. So I'm just getting some orange juice. I got a gallon of orange juice, and I'm just looking at stuff. You know, candies, chips, that kind of thing. I'm trying to convince myself I either want it or I don't. Gotcha. I'm standing around. I got my orange juice and this guy walks in. Let me let me picture this. What does he look like? Big guy. Had a red nar blue shirt on with a flower pattern. Had a package under his arm. Big thing. Wrapped with parchment paper. Where's this going, where's this going dude? I'm just telling you about the other day. It's a story. He glances up at a nearby clock. It might still be a while until the service guy showed up. I'm just passing the time. Fair enough. A customer? I thought so. I mean, I didn't think much of it. I'm just checking out bubblegum. So I'm there. Staying around with my orange juice and this guy comes in. He's looking all around the store like he's trying to find someone. I don't think anything of it. I keep browsing chocolate bars. And then... So, the guy says something. I didn't hear, I wasn't listening in on or anything, but he definitely said something because the guy behind the counter starts freaking out. He's shouting, he's waving stuff around. This is where I start taking notice. He goes, I don't want you to touch it. I don't want you to touch it. You don't get it? Touch it? See, that's what I'm thinking. So I kind of stop rummaging through sweets and move closer to the counter. So I'm trying to hear what this is all about. When I notice the guy's package, it's dripping. Okay, a brown, a brown parchment paper package dripping with something? You got it. I'm moving closer, and the guy behind the counter goes into the back to get something. The guy with the package looks really shifty, like he's ready to run out of the shop at any point. The counter guy comes back in. He's got a pair of snowshoes. He's wearing them on his hands. 
okay, and then it gets even weirder. Another guy comes in, he's also wearing snowshoes on his hands. And this guy is looking at the counter guy like they're Arctic Explorers. Like this guy just reached the North Pole before the other guy. Right. I'm just standing there with my orange juice and they don't see me or they don't care. Whatever they're doing is way more important. They start shouting at each other and package guys just keeping them from ripping each other apart. It's getting wild. Okay. Eventually, package guy managed to cool them down. They're not shouting, and they don't look like they're not going. And they don't look like they're going to murder each other. And I'm thinking to myself, I gotta get out of here. You know, I'm just looking at these three guys, and I've got my orange shoes in my hand, and I gotta do something. So what'd you do? Well, I went to pay for my orange shoes, but I don't want to make the situation worse. And these guys are all around the counter. So I'm just about ready to muster up the courage to go to talk to the counter guy when package guy starts singing. What? He starts singing. He's singing this weird song. I didn't know the language, but it sounds like a folk song or something. Real traditional old stuff. After a few seconds, the two others join in, and it's like they're doing harmonies, right? Like they practice this. That's not even the weird part. The counter guy notices me, and I'm just standing in the back holding my orange shoes, and counter guy sees me. But he's all smiles. He starts gesturing for me to come over there. And did you? Well, I walk over, and three, and all three of them are still singing. These are, these are big dudes, like double my size, and they're all singing, all smiling. The two guys with the snowshoes start clapping them together with the rhythm of the song package guy now this is the weird part package guy takes the package out from under his arm and in my head i'm like oh man what's in the package right of course so they start singing louder and louder snowshoe dudes are slapping them to them together hard enough to break and my package and package guy grabs a parchment paper he starts peeling the paper aside and i'm just standing there watching with my orange juice and two guys going nuts with these oversized tennis racket looking things and what was in the package right as he's about to show what he's got wrapped up and what's dripping all over his shirt he stops no and they all start laughing package guy points at me grins in between struggle he says ah noisy boy i'm just standing there with my orange shoes thinking what the hell is going on they all start jumping up and down and they keep singing but they change the lyrics to noisy boy noisy boy noisy boy noisy boy like it's the funniest thing they've ever heard so I just show them my orange juice, you know, like I'm just trying to say that I just want to pay and get out. But the counter guy just laughs and brings out his, this huge bag like a sack and it's full of fake snow, like cotton or white confetti or something. He grabs some of that stuff and throws it at me. He's still laughing and just gestures for me to get out like, it's fine dude, just go. And did you? I just left man, it got too weird. He stops contemplating what he just told. It was a very weird Monday. Can't deny that. Yeah. Two of you sit like this for a while. A minute passes. I walked past that same corner shop this morning, though. No they had a sign in the window. What did it say? Snowshoes. Snow service. He grins. Very, very wide. Pete, I swear to God. Before you can say anything, Pete's paper pager starts beeping. Oh, perfect timing. Service guys are here. Come on. Dude, let's ask them for a rope or ladder. The service crew is easygoing and lend the two of you their ladder. You place it in the shaft and make your way down into the bowels of the building. Ooh, who's that? Is that Cthulhu over there? Whoa! What the? What is all this? This is the coolest basement I've ever seen. And I used to live in a basement. <laughs> Smoky carpet, the dim lighting, the inescapable feeling that you've disturbed the sanctity of this place by being here outside of open hours. This is a bar. Has to be. Someone's running a bar in the basement of an office building? Oh, it's a bar. Yeah, I've se I see it now. Good eye, man. It's not a bar. It's a club. Oh. I'm guessing that's Tilda. Hello. Hello, girl. I'm How Tilda. Oh, okay. I'm the bartender. Doesn't look up from her work. She's barely paying attention. It's a club! Of course. I was thinking it was a bar, but it's a club. 
<laughs> See, being sarcastic doesn't look like a chief. Uh, wait, didn't you used to work at the Blue Oyster Club? She stops and then looks up at you with horror. Oh god, I knew I recognized you. Give me one good reason not to throw you out right now. Good to see you too. Hey, well, remind me, what happened? Shatterboy here set fire to the, a glass of industrial strength alcohol, rocks, parsley, and mayonnaise inside the club while people were inside. Do you have any idea how hard it was to get that smell out? Very. If that wasn't enough, word got out that the Blue Oyster Club was the smelliest place in Snacky Bay. Crowd stopped showing up. Ted stopped sh showing up. Eventually, I stopped showing up as well. So, why did you do between then and now. The National Health Department contacted me and offered me work as a consultant. I spent a few years as a uh, tox toxicologist. Tox a what? An ex expert on poison. Turns out it's not that different from being a mixologist. A what? Bartender. Eventually I missed, their I I missed the job though, so I quit and these guys hired me. Turns out I'm just so sociable and sweet that I can't stay away from working hospitality. I'm just that much of a people pleaser. A what? Shut up. I, I, I agree. I'm sorry, I promise I won't do it again. Glares, lots and lots of glares, glaring up upon glaring. Then she collects herself and takes a deep breath. Listen, we can put it behind us, but we're not friends. Remember that. Doesn't look like a chief, okay. I'm clear, man. You don't say. I'm Pete. This is the coolest club I've ever seen. You haven't seen many clubs, have you? I barely know what a club is. <laughs> oh no. Both serve drinks, clubs serve entertainment. Uh oh. Only since this morning, I sleep at home. About three months, I think. I started working here two months back after I left my last gig. The funny kind. The basement kind. <laughs> the basement kind. No, the comedy kind. Of course. Of course. It's a comedy club. That's what they oh, tell no. me anyway. <laughs> Pete's eyes light up. He go he he goose to this mucho. A comedy club in the basement of my own company? Sure, you're funny. I'm sure about eighty-eight percent of people agree. Then again, that's like pulling ten people. It's not like a lot of people know you. You're kind of a nobody. Dang, that's kind of hitting home. Uh, <laughs> how is this legal? How come no one knew about this? Because we haven't no we haven't opened up yet. Like I said, the place has been here for a couple months. We've barely had time to get things in working condition. She looks over the bar for a second. Well, I say working condition. Pete squints, his tone ever so slightly tinted with a hint of authority. How come we didn't know? How come we didn't know though? This is our building. We own it. Look at Fishboy here, so confident all of a sudden. She looks up at Pete, who quickly becomes void of any trace of authority. You don't own the basement. City law. Anything beneath the ground floor can be rented out without the consent of the post surface owner. Rented out by who? The city. All income goes directly to the city. I'm not sure exactly to, to what, but that's what, what you were told. But that city doesn't own Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise, and I'm pretty sure we own the building. What's that's the way the law works. I know it's weird. They passed it a few years ago, and we all know how how corrupt the last mayor was. Conversation goes silent. All three of you know very well that's true. Pete looks uncomfortable. She clears the throat, breaking the silence. Anyway, maybe something good can come out of it. Self awareness high. There's some hope in her voice which seems incredibly off brand. Maybe this whole culture and comedy thing is more appealing to her than she's willing to admit. Anyway, city law says that it can run out however they please. Adds that. Hmm. 
Turns out without consent? That can't be right. You better believe it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. I don't think I've ever heard the term post surface before. Obviously, you're not very familiar with city law. It's the same as post un unemployment, post tax, and post post. Post post? Email. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you about something else. Am I funny? Oh, wait. That's just to myself. Okay. Uh, you said they, so this isn't your club? Nope. I just take care of the bar. So, who owns it? I got one of the tables. Talk to them instead, not me. She points towards the empty tables and chairs from one of the corners. You hear voices in, con in conversation. I'm going to go talk to the owners. See you later, Tilda. Mm -hmm. You go on ahead, man. I'm going to take this place in. A comedy club in the basement of my own company? Sure, I'll be right back. He doesn't respond. He's overcome with awe, smiling like a kid. Uh, point and click. Okay. Microphone. Doesn't think of beer and spit. Must be new. That's good. What about, uh... Man, I got a pretty schnoz. The triad. Clayton, the three owners seem to be deep in thought. The large guy and the short girl either don't notice you or don't pay you any mind. It's hard to tell. The guy on your left, however, seems you approach and brines up a little. Whoa, a uh, fresh face. Hey, man, how's it going? How did you get in here? Hmm. Well, voice actually kind of sounds a bit Didn't familiar. Didn't we lock the door? Al, didn't you lock the door? Yeah, I locked the door. Look, sorry, man, we're not open. Guys, come on. We were just talking about this. Ah, about random dudes breaking in and strolling up to us like they're expecting casual conversation. Uh-huh. What conversation were you having? Clay, I get what you're saying. This... this isn't it. Isn't what? People? We need people. Even if it's just one people. I mean, person. I didn't mean to interrupt anything. Ah, don't worry, man. Tensions are a little high. We're just dealing with something. Ugh, that's an understatement. I'm Al. Uh, yeah. Hi. Um, I'm Edna. I'm Clayton. Welcome to the Poseidon. This is our club. Hi, I'm Clayman. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Checks out. Mystery's all. Thanks, dude. Well, what you don't I mean, play? we haven't done much. Uh, it's a start. Most of the interior is done. Bar's done, too. All we need now is to lure a crowd into the basement. I know, it sounds like a lot of fun. So, who are you guys? We're uh, comedians. <laughs> Whoa, real life comedians? Shocking, right? We exist outside of Netpick specials. Me and Edna were doing the same venues and got back to know each other. Al here just got back into doing live stuff. Got tired of corporate gigs and open mics and bars. Figured it was time Snacky Bay got a real club. A club for comedians. Run by comedians. Sounds awesome. When are you guys opening? The owner shared a defeated sigh. We're supposed to open tonight, so in about nine hours? I sent a butt, and we sent a lack of butts and seats. Ha. Huh. Something like that. Yeah, we, we get sort of neglected doing any marketing. Me and my friend didn't even know you guys were here, and we work in the same building. No shit. I was contemplating something, and eventually asked you, You're not doing anything right now, are you? I should be at work, honestly. But you're not, so you can scratch that one off. What Edna and Al are trying to say is we can use your help if you're up for it. Help with what? Getting the word out. Letting people know we're opening, that we exist. I mean, you came across our secret underground Ill illegal lair. You're going to tell someone no matter what, right? Sure, I can tell people about your club. <laughs> Sweet, thanks man. That's a huge load off our shoulders. 
Coincidentally, you feel like a huge load has been placed on you. Weird, huh? That's one problem solved. On to the next, I guess. We're one act short of a show. Everyone we know is booked right now. It's just the three of us. Clay nods and chuckles. You don't happen to do stand-up, do you? Think of a joke. 15. All right. These guys are comedy nerds. Hit them with some classic deadpan. The boss is hard to convince, so when I told him I needed the day off because I hurt my foot, I really had to nail it. That's so dry. I like it. What a dad joke. The father of all jokes. She snickers. Shut up. Not bad. It's definitely a start. If you're up for it, we need another comic for the opening. There's a first time for everything. Um... Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. You'll be fine. We'll help you prepare. Yeah, you agree to perform and we agree not to press charges, you know, for breaking in. I don't have a choice, do I? No. No, you don't. Fine. I'll do it. Great. We've got a full show. Yay. Just kidding. Appreciate it, my dude. Yeah, don't worry. We're just fucking around. We'll do fine. All right, here's the plan. We get the place ready for tonight, till it gets the bar in top shape, and you get in touch with the newspaper some, get the word out. How's that sound? How do I get the word out? But what about me? What, what about my routine? Don't bother running around telling random people. Find someone with reach, a journalist, a media guy, something like that. Try to make the news if you can. What about me? What about my routine? Don't worry about it, just get out there. As long as you observe the world around you and talk to people, you think of something to joke about. How many jokes would I need? You don't have to go on for long, just a few minutes. Something like three good bits should be enough. Come up with these jokes? Got it. Bits. We call them bits. I'm confused. Where do I find inspiration? Just talk to people. Help them. Listen to them. Do shit. The world is an absurd place. There's plenty to joke about. Oh, that sounds easy enough. Alright, I can totally do this. <laughs> awesome! Alright, we'll, we'll get everything set up here. Come back when you have some jokes and we'll have you, you, you workshop. Don't stress too much about it, alright? Anything can be made funny. Good luck, my dude. Oh, and let your friend know before you go. I'm already just going to stand there forever if you don't. Alright, Pete, you heard the word. He's silent, as awestruck as you left him. Right there, man? I hate being the CEO, man. I hate it. Honestly, dude, I've been depressed. It's taken me down. You're the only person I like hanging out with, and you technically work for me. That sucks. I hate how that feels. He sighs. Today is the first time I felt good in a long time. It's like it's like I forgot what the feel what that feels like. I'm telling you, dude. This is the start of something great, something new. I had no idea, man. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Listen, that's in the past now. I want to get out of this slump. I've wanted that for so long to have fun again. He chuckles to himself and gestures at the empty club. This is fate, right? Certainly a welcome coincidence. <laughs> he couldn't stop smiling if he tried. Yeah, it is. Got some news for you, buddy. He doesn't take his eyes off the sea of chairs and tables. Oh, yeah? What's up? I'm going to do stand-up. His jaw hits the floor. No way. No way. My best friend is going to be a comedian. Dude, that's awesome. Kind of excited. Imagine how I feel, dude. Dude, I'm so stoked. This is the best thing ever. What are you going to joke about? Office work? The, that whole conspiracy or deal from a few years ago? Not sure yet. Well, dude, whatever it is, you're going to kill it. Take as much time off from work as you want, dude. I mean it. I guess we should get going. Are you done here? Sure, let's go. Lead the way, man. I guess we can exit the way we came. Alright, so... That is, uh... A little bit of a first look at Clam Man 2 Open Mic. Now, so far, I kind of, I really like how it's going. It's a, like, story-driven narrative type thing, but there's, like, 
aspects that were incorporated in the beginning. So yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please uh, drop a like and comment that what you want to see or if you want more. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Adios.